Today, we will answer a math challenge given by one of our followers. And the question goes like this. Find the value of x in this congruence, x congruent to 1 mod 5, x is congruent to 4 mod 7, and x is congruent to 3 mod 11. Now, pause this video right now and see if you can answer this question. Because I will show you two different methods to answer this in 3, 2, 1. By the way, this question is under the modular arithmetic. So, x is congruent to 1 mod 5. It says also that if this number x is divided by 5, you get a remainder of 1. Same thing, when this same number x divided by 7, you get a remainder of 4. And if this same number divided by 11, you get a remainder of 3. So the 5, 7, and 11 are called modulus. By the way, I will show you two different methods to answer this. And the first one is algebra approach, and the second one is the Chinese remainder theorem. Now, in order to use this Chinese remainder theorem, we need to make sure that those modulus are relatively prime to each other, which is 5 is relatively prime to 7 and relatively prime to 11. So we can use the Chinese remainder theorem or the CRT. So now let's begin. So let's start our method, the first method, which is the algebra approach. Now, before we start, I assume that you already know some of the properties of modular arithmetic. And now, let's begin. Let's use x is congruent to 3 mod 11 because we can rewrite this as x equals to 11k plus 3. Now, what we're going to do is to use this and the second congruence. So we know x is equivalent to 11k plus 3 where in k is an integer and x is congruent to 4 mod 7. So we can replace this x with 11k plus 3 like this and now we will solve this congruence and to answer this let's subtract 3 on both sides so this will give us 11k is congruent to 1 mod 7 and then subtract a multiple of 7 on the left hand side so this will give us 4k is congruent to 1 mod 7 now add 7 on the right hand side to the remainder so this will give us 4k is congruent to 8 mod 7. So why we do that? Because we cannot divide both sides by 4. So we get that k is congruent to 2 mod 7. And at this point, what we're going to do is to use this and the value of x. Now k is congruent to 2 mod 7. We can rewrite this as k is equal to 7m plus 2, wherein m is also an integer. So why we do that? Because we need to replace this to this value of k. So we have x is equivalent to 11 multiplied by 7m plus 2 plus 3. Simplifying this, we have 77m plus 22 plus 3 and 22 plus 3 will give us 25. So this is now the value of x, wherein we use two of the given congruence. Now, let's have the third one. So let's use x is congruent to 1 mod 5. Now from here, we need to replace again this x with this value 77m plus 25. And again, let's solve this congruence. So first, let's subtract a multiple of 5 on the left-hand side. So let's subtract 75m and 25. So this will give us 2m is congruent to 1 mod 5. Now at this point, add 5 to the remainder. So this will give us 2m is congruent to 6 mod 5. So divide both sides by 2. This will give us m is congruent to 3 mod 5. Now, let's use this and this value of x. Now, m is congruent to 3 mod 5. We can rewrite this as m equals to 5p plus 3, wherein p is also an integer. Now, let's replace this m with 5p plus 3. And let's simplify so x is equal to 385p plus 231 plus 25. 231 plus 25 is 256. And this is the value of x. So x is equal to 385p plus 256, wherein this p is an integer. Now we know this is the value of x. And if we want the smallest value of x, we let this p be equal to 0. So the smallest value of x, the smallest positive value of x, is equivalent to 256. So it tells us 
when 256 is divided by 5, you get 51 remainder 1, and that is correct. Now, 256 divided by 7, this is just 36 remainder 4, and that is also correct for the second congruence. And 256 divided by 11, you get 23 remainder 3, which is true to the third congruence. So therefore, the smallest positive value of x simply equal to 256. And there's a lot of possible values of x. If you let p equals 1, you get the same thing. If you get p equals 2, and so on and so forth. And now, we can rewrite this in congruence format. So we can say that x is congruent to 256 mod 385. And this is our answer to this question. Using algebra approach. Now, how about using the CRT or the Chinese remainder theorem? So when you have four congruence or five or six, algebra method is a big mess. So we need to use another method, and that method is called the Chinese remainder theorem. So let's have the Chinese remainder theorem. First, let's create the CRT table. Since we have three congruence, so we have three rows, all right? And now, three rows and four columns. Now, let's use this congruence because in this first box, we need to put this one, four, and three. So we have here in the first column, so one, four, and three. Next, on the second column, what we're going to do is under this one, we have to find the product of these two moduli, which is seven and 11. And in this four, we need to find the product of 5 and 11. In this 3, we need to find the product of 7 and 11. So this is the pairwise product. This is 1. So this is 7 times 11. If this is 4, this is 5 and 11. The other 2, if this is 3. Then the other 2 moduli, 5 and 7. So we can multiply them. We have 77. We have 5 times 11 is 55. And 5 times 7 is 35. Now at this point, let's have the third column and let's have x sub 1, x sub 2, and x sub 3. Now the question is how do we get the value of x sub 1, x sub 2, and x sub 3? So this is how we get the value of x sub 1, x sub 2, and x sub 3. Now this x sub 1 is a number that when you multiply by 77, then the product is divided by 5, you get a remainder of 1. Or simply this x sub 1 is a modular inverse of 77. This is the same thing as x sub 2 and x sub 3. So we need to find those values and we replace this x sub 1, x sub 2, and x sub 3. So let's do that. First, let's subtract a multiple of 5 on the left-hand side. So subtract 75 x sub 1. So this will give us 2 x sub 1 congruent to 1 mod 5. Now add 5. So we have 2 x sub 1 congruent to 6 mod 5 divided by 2, we have x sub 1 is congruent to 3 mod 5. And we're done. So we know the value of x sub 1, which is 3. Now how about x sub 2? So let's subtract a multiple of 7 to the left-hand side. So subtract 49 x sub 2. This will give us 6 x sub 2 is congruent to 1 mod 7. Now subtract 7 to the remainder. So this will give us 6 x sub 2 is congruent to negative 6 mod 7. Divide both sides by 6. We have x sub 2 is congruent to 1, negative 1 mod 7. Now, to make this positive, add 7 again. And we have x sub 2 is congruent to 6 mod 7. Now, we have x sub 2, which is 6. Now, how about x sub 3? So, subtract a multiple of 11 to the left-hand side. So, we have negative 33 x sub 2. So, we have 2 x sub 3 is congruent to 1 mod 11. Now, add 11 to the remainder. So we have 2 x sub 3 is congruent to 12 mod 11, and then divide both sides by 2. We have x sub 3 congruent to 6 mod 11. And we now have the value of x sub 3, which is 6. Now, let's replace this x sub 1 with 3. And this x sub 2 with 6. Finally, x sub 3 with 6. And the next step is to focus on the CRT table. 
And what we're going to do is to multiply 177 and 3, 455 and 6, 335 and 6. Now, let's get the product. 1 times 77 times 3 is 231. 4 times 55 times 6, this will give us 1,320. 3 times 35 times 6, this will give us 630. Now, the Chinese remainder theorem tells us that x here is congruent to the sum of these three numbers mod to the LCM of those moduli, which is 5 times 7 times 11, which is 35 times 11 or simply equal to 385. And this sum, if we get the sum of those numbers, we get an answer of 2,181. And now, to make this number smaller than 385, we need to subtract a multiple of 385. So let's subtract 1,925, which is a multiple of 385. And x is congruent now to 256 mod 385. And obviously, we get the same thing. Therefore, given this congruence, we have x congruent to 1 mod 5, x congruent to 4 mod 7, x congruent to 3 mod 11, and we get an answer of x is congruent to 256 mod 385. And as always, we are done.